gold standard. Happy New Year traders everywhere. Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club with our first market update for 2012. Welcome back. I hope you all had a great time. But uh, crude oil is on the move today. Tensions, technicals, and triangles propel this market higher. Gold. Have the trade trials got this one wrong? We'll also be looking at three stocks on the move, Micron, Peabody Energy, and Neighbors Industries, and see what our trade triangle technology thinks about those three stocks. Is Europe still a problem? Or have traders' attitudes changed over the holidays on that front? We'll view the dollar and the euro dollar on that markets today. Now let's go to the markets and see the one truth we rely on every day here at Market Club, and that's our trade trial technology. But first, if you have the opportunity to join us in Salt Lake City for our Market Club Investors Summit on the 24th to the 27th, we'd love to have you there. Uh, you can call the number on the screen, 1-877-219-1482, extension 10234. And if you're calling internationally, give us a call at one 1- 801-341-3981. We'd love to have you attend. I'll be there talking about the markets, of course, and discussing strategies that I think you'll enjoy seeing. But let's go to the markets right now. And we're on my homepage, Market Club. You can see right here, we have some new icons here for you to look at. But we want to look at the charts in our portfolio. So what we do there is just click on the portfolio portion of Market Club. And these are portfolios you can, of course, make yourself and use them very easily. And here we are at my portfolio page, and wow, hard to believe, the 3rd of January 2012. Boy, time flies. Looking at the S&P 500, the market was higher earlier, trading as high as 1284, now we're trading at 1277, and I think there's a reason for that, and I'm gonna share that with you right now. We're plus 70, meaning that's an emerging trend with the triangles, it hasn't been developed fully yet, and this is what I wanna look at. So here we are, we had the rally, but, you know, we've had rallies like this before. It looked like we were going really high then. We've come back, boom, boom, boom. I think we're still in this sort of trading range. Our longer-term trade triangle, our monthly trade triangle, has never changed. It didn't even change with today's strong rally. We've got a couple of tools we can put in here that we use and like to use. And the first one is on-chart studies. We're going to go to our Donchian trade channels. We use a de facto standard. And we're also going to go our parabolic. And you can see the power box have been positive, yes, but we just moved outside of the trade, tra excuse me, the Donchian channel. And normally when that happens, much like it happened here, you come back into the channel. I would not be surprised to see this market more on the defensive. Really, what happened? The news came out of China that things were looking good. They're talking about recession in Europe. It's a dichotomy. It isn't going to work like that. So let's see how this plays out uh, in the next couple of days. But I think everybody came back from uh, holidays saying I was going to lose weight, get more hair, grow taller, whatever, make more money in the market. And everybody got very enthusiastic about the markets early on. And I think it's probably overdone on the upside for the moment. But nonetheless, it's a pretty good showing in the marketplace. If we go further down here, you can see we're actually now in an overboard zone. Potential for a bearish divergence because we didn't make new highs on the Williams percent R. So let's see how this plays out. So let's go to our next market. As you know, uh, silver market. We've been talking about the silver market for some time now. And you can see we've had a rally to just about the midpoint of the Donchian trade channels. We're back in an overbought condition, much like we were here into the midpoint again. I think we'll see this market come down. I just don't think the enthusiasm is there to drive this market higher. Plus, we have a minus 55 indicating a trading range, but our monthly and weekly trade triangles are still negative on this market, and that's the important thing to remember. So generally speaking, we're at a zone much like we were back here, very similar, overbought. The trend is down. I think we'll resume this trend and certainly go back and test the lower portion of this area, which is right around here, around the 27 level. And that indicates, again, that would, that would be maybe the beginning of a nucleus to build a base to move higher. But we're not there yet, and that's the important thing to remember. So let's not get too enthusiastic about this move in silver. This is, I would say, silver has two hats. It wears an industrial metal, and sometimes it's considered a precious metal. When people get so enamored with gold, they say, oh, let's, silver must be going higher. But in reality, it's more of an industrial metal because there's still a lot of silver around. And I think for the most part, I wouldn't get too enthusiastic about this move. Uh, let's, if it's going to move higher, there'd be lots of time to get in. I don't think this is the time to get in. So let's go to our next market. 
and that's going to be gold. And gold, again, it's a minus 55. We have our trade triangles on monthly, by the way, turned, you can see right here, at 1532. And you're going to see the market is 16, Adam. Yes, it is, but this is a longer term move. Also, this occurred during silly season. You've You've heard me talk about silly season before. This is the time period about the 15th of December until the end of December and also about the first week in January when the markets really are silly. There's a lot of traders who aren't trading these markets. They're traveling, they're on vacation, whatever. And the markets are very thin and they move, can be moved very quickly one way or another, up or down. So let's not get too enthusiastic about this market at the moment. Again, minus 65 means it's still in a trading range but not don't get th enthusiastic. It's also in an overboard condition, just entered in an overboard condition, much like it did back here in late November. So let's go to our next market. And that's going to be copper. Now, copper, uh, we've got a Fibonacci drawn in here, but let me just move this around a little bit so we get this off the screen here. I'm going to take this off. It's easy to do. The Fibonacci is a tool we refer to lots of times. You've seen me use it. And uh, Again, I think this is another case of the market's gotten very enthusiastic. We've say this on the blog, the copper is an industrial metal. When the stock market goes up, the this tends this market cop, when the stock market goes up, copper tends to go up. And of course with the news out of China today it was considered to be a bullish sign. So again, we're plus seventy, however the Long-term monthly trade triangle in copper still remains negative, just as it did here. And if you go back, you can see this co this negative trade triangle has been in place for some time. And let's just go back. Here it is back here. Uh, so that's back in September uh, 19th of 2011. So it's been in place for several months. And if you look at the longer term picture, it doesn't look quite so bullish. And if we take Let's go back a little further. Uh, let's go one year. And let's take some of this off. I want to just show you something I want to look at right now. And that is, let's take this off and let's take the Donchian trade channels off. And let's take the some of these triangles off. And let's go to simply a line chart. And if we draw a trend line from the highs here, Yep, you could say it's possibly broken out. I'm not so enthusiastic about this, but uh, you could say we've got support here. So I think for the moment, we're still in the sort of very broad trading range. Uh, I think the 360 area is probably going to be a level that's going to be a, like, a, like a brick wall for this market. And I think we could see the market possibly turning down later this week. So let's see how that plays out. Next market we're going to be looking at is the Crude oil market, this had a lot of lot of excitement today. Highest close we've seen in this market is, uh, just so I get this right for you, is 102.32, we're 102.70. This would be a new high close if we close up here. It looks as though, to me, it's made a, uh, let me put my illustrator on here just to show you. It looks to me that we possibly made, let me just turn this off, a, kind of like a little energy, oops, that's not what I want. Let me just turn this off. It looks to me we've sort of made a little sort of energy level here, a little possible mini head and shoulders. If you can just draw a head, that we are. And we've broken out, indicating a move from, I say, probably the, let's say 90, we'll just round this out, 95 to 100. So we could be looking at the 105 to maybe the 106, 107 levels. So that takes us back to all the way back to these levels right here. So I, I would think, generally speaking, we could see the market go to that level. And if you look at this even on a longer term, you could say this is really a big base, meaning like here, here, and here. Now, obviously, the Straits of Hormuz are in the news. How big a deal that is, I don't know. But the market's telling you pretty much what it wants to do. And I think this looks extremely positive. Our trade triangles, if we put them on, are plus 100, being a very, very strong trend. You can see all the levels we've gotten in on, and all done very, very well. And again, we had this trade triangle come in. The monthly kicked back in. Uh, this is on November 16th, and you had a chance to buy at much lower levels based on uh, some of our other key levels. So you can see how it, it's worked. So very, very cool. And uh, let's just clean this off the screen. Let's go to our next chart, and that's going to be, it's good to be back. You know, it's good to be back and talking about the markets after a break, uh, which was much needed by everybody, I think. Uh, it's been a, 2011 was a very tough year for a lot of traders. 
uh, when you think the average hedge fund which was down for the year, and these are some of the best traders in the world, apparently. Uh, and you look at our trade trends, which actually did well. So we're pretty happy about our status here. So let's take the dailies off. Let's look at this as the US dollar index. You can see quite clearly it's a plus 55, indicating the trend is a trading range. And it's not well defined right now. We had been bullish on this market, expecting it to go higher. And we still feel that's the general trend. And if you look at the if you look at the weeklies and the monthlies, the monthlies are on the top here, weeklies are right here, and you look at the way this market is just going, it would suggest that the trend is still higher. You look at these previous tops, which is right here, which should lend support, and that's around, around the 7950, 79 area, should be support for this market. So again, everybody got very enthusiastic, and maybe they all got the different side of the bed this morning. So, oh, wow, things are great, and the dollar, Europe is terrible, Europe is great, all no problems there and the dollar is terrible. So I think it sort of lends itself to a, a pullback here. So I think, uh, generally speaking, we probably regroup here, and I think we'll see the market start to go high as the trends remain positive for the US dollar. So let's not forget the big trends. I think a lot of people look at these markets too closely and sort of get micromanaged into thinking about what's going to happen and get enthusiastic really on levels that they probably may not need to, to get enthusiastic on. So let's take a look at another thing. This is the Writers Jeffrey's CRB Commodity Index. And a lot of people are getting enthusiastic about commodities, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. But the bottom line is the trend, our monthly trade triangle trend is negative from 335. The market's currently 312. And if one draws a simple trend line, which we can do right here, you can see that this market basically is probably at an area between 312 and 315 where it's going to run into resistance. And I think we'll see a pullback from current level. I think a lot of enthusiasm on the upside for this market. We're back in a very overbought situation. And not to say we can't go higher, but I think the odds probably favor not going higher. So let's take a look at our next market. And you have two choices here. You can either go toggle back and forth between the buttons here, or you can just simply go click on the X, which takes you back to your portfolio. And let's take a look at the Euro dollar index, the Euro dollar currency pair, I should say, not index. But look at the enthusiasm. We're trading at 3057. Uh, we were just below, if you put the lines on here and we get closer and let's go to three months, you can see we sort of went sideways for three or four days. And these are this is what I consider to be the silly season. There's no volume. Anybody, any hedge fund can move these markets really pretty closely when there's not a lot of trade participation. And that's the key thing to remember. Once we get past this week, things will get more back to normal, if that makes sense, more normal. We'll have better volumes. People will be more enthusiastic about and more have more conviction about these markets. And I think that's what you want to look at. So let's go to our next market. These are the three markets we've talked about in our opening comments. And what I want to show you, Micron Technology, Peabody Energy, and Neighbors Industries. Now look at the score, plus 70, plus 70, plus 70. Now these are big movers today. You can see 8.8%, 7.5%, and 7%. So percentage-wise, they all had very big moves. First of all, the one market to look at, the Micron Technology, let's go there first of all, and see what the trade triangles, basically longer term negative weekly and monthly positive. So you have an emerging trend when it's a plus 70. And you can see where it stopped, pretty much where the highs were back here. The highs were 7. And I think we got to today 696. And it was currently trading 684. I would rather see this market consolidate, move over the highs that we saw back here. Um, and you can argue, yes, the market closed. The highest close we've seen in this market is 674. Uh, so I think it'll be interesting to see where we close today because it, it's obviously closing prices mean a lot to traders. But if we scope this out a little further, say a year, you can see this is this has had a history of sort of making moves, coming back down, making moves, coming back down. I don't think the market's there yet, so I wouldn't get too enthusiastic about today's move. I think it may be overdone on the upside. So let's go to our next market, and that's going to be BTU Peabody Energy, and again. This is a monthly negative, weekly, and daily positive. Uh, but the weekly is being in place from $60 back here. Uh, excuse me, the monthly is being in 
placement, sixty dollars back here, and it hasn't changed. And the market's almost half that. So I wouldn't get too enthusiastic about this. Trying to pick bottoms in the market is a loser's game. Period. I've never seen anybody successfully do that. It's like catching a falling knife. I mean, look at Bank of America and City last year. People kept thought, oh, this is the you know this is it's cheap, cheap means it can get cheaper, guys. Don't fall for that line. So let's go to our next market. And the next market we're looking at is NBR, Neighbors Industries. Again, uh, monthly down, uh, weekly and daily up. However, the trend in this market continues to be negative. And unless we see this market, I think, probably go over this level right here, which would be around about the tw uh, 20 level, uh, I think you, there's no reason to get enthusiastic about this market. Trying to pick a bottom here it's still in a sideways mode. Plus 70 is an emerging trend. I'd rather buy it at 20, 21, knowing that's made a turn. Uh, because if we draw our trend lines, again, these are what some simple tools you can use as a trader. And let me just put that on. Just draw it from the highs, the recent highs anyway, the highs back here. Draw this down, and look, we're just right back into the top of the trend line. So I think maybe if we break over this trend line, close over the trend line, maybe something's going because that's a pretty long trend line going all the way back to April 27th of 2011. So it's a nine month trend line. Let's see how this plays out. And uh, let's go from there. But hey, listen, last word. And I really hope you can do this. If you can join us at our Market Club Investors Summit in Salt Lake City, we'd love to have you there. I'd love to meet you personally. I'll be there. And uh, we have limited space. So give us a call today, 1-877-219-1482, extension 10234. If you're calling internationally, give us a call at 1-801-341-3981, extension 10234. Again, it's January 24th through the 27th. I'd love to meet you personally. I'm going to be there speaking. Uh, it's our first ever Market Club Investor Summit. We'll be doing more of these uh, sometime in the future. I'm not sure when, but this is the one you want to attend. It's a great way to kick off the new year and do something good for yourself. So learn how these work, how our system works, and how you can approach the market and make money in 2012. Hey, I'm Adam Hewison. Thanks so much. Great to be back. And remember, we'll be back tomorrow, same time, same channel. Have a great trading day.